This is Whiskey 5 Mike Alpha Echo, Travis County Aries, Austin, Texas, y'all. In this video, we'll be installing a solder type male PL259 connector onto LMR400 Ultraflex using a coax prep tool from DX Engineering. The PL259 connector comes in two parts. A body and a barrel. It also comes in two types, uh, silver plated and nickel plated, and you'll want to use the silver plated version. Uh, silver or solder doesn't stick very well to nickel plating. Um, we'll begin our prep by using the tool and the side that says first cut, and we will. Uh, applying pressure to the coax and rotating clockwise with respect to the cut end of the coax. The stripping tool will strip away the layers of the coax until we meet uh, resistance. And then we'll flip the tool over to the other side to remove the um, jacket from the shield braid. And clean our work surface. The next step in the process is to uh, take our diagonal braid trimmers and trim back a little bit of the braid from the dielectric. This will help prevent a common assembly problem uh, where the shield braid comes unraveled during the assembly process and some of the connectors get into the dielectric area and cause a short and then also in this case our uh, cable prep tool left just a bit of um, dielectric material and we will go ahead and remove that this particular tool has been used for many cable preps and the blades probably are about due for replacing We'll examine the dielectric area to make sure that it's free of any conductive material. And I think I may strip this back just a bit further. The next step in the process is optional, uh, but recommended if you're likely to be running more than 100 watts of power through the connector, and that is to tack down the shield braid with some solder. Since this is the first uh, soldering that's being done, I'm going to wet the tip of the soldering iron with some solder. This will help clean the tip and prepare it for soldering, and then I'll clean that using the cleaning floss or the uh, wet sponge and we'll do this by placing the solder across the shield braid and then tapping it with the soldering iron to tack, tap that, tack that uh, shield braid down with solder. You want to apply very little solder in this process if you get any lumps of solder you won't be able to apply the body to the coax. In the next subsequent step, 
If you get a lump of solder, you can swipe back along the coax to remove the, the lump. And you want to apply minimum amount of heat in order to not melt the dielectric below. The next step in the process is to uh, sleeve on a piece of heat shrink tubing. This is optional. And then the connector barrel with the threaded sides of the barrel toward the cut end of the connector. And then you'll need to sleeve, uh, screw the body of the connector onto the coax. You'll want to uh, insert the center conductor in the small hole in the connector body. And you have to do this by feel. Um, you don't want to apply any force when you're doing this uh, because another common fault in the connector assembly is for one of the conductors in the um, center conductor strand to peel away from that strand and get caught in the body of the connector as it's assembled and create a short. This area of the connector body is threaded and bites into the jacket of the coax, uh, adding a great deal of structural strength to uh, the connector assembly. And then I'm going to use this uh, tool from DX Engineering to thread the body onto the coax. Uh, this is awkward to do by hand and uh, with, a, with a pair of pliers. This tool makes that process a lot easier and gives you the control and leverage that you need. And we'll thread the, the connector onto the body until our center conductor material appears at the end of the pin. At this point, it's a good, good time to continuity test to make sure that no shorts have been introduced into the connector body. At this point the connector is recoverable but once you begin soldering you'll need a new connector if you make a make a mistake. This is a three-handed operation so humans are only equipped with two hands and uh, therefore a vice is necessary to do this work. If the connector were to protrude beyond the end of the notch, uh, you can use your braid trimmers at this point to trim that off. I'm going to clean my soldering iron. Uh, oxides develop on the tip of a hot soldering iron and uh, you want to make sure they're not introduced into the body of the work you're soldering. We'll hold the soldering iron in the notch onto the center conductor. For eight to ten seconds we want to apply a minimum amount of heat to a minimum for a minimum amount of time uh, in order to avoid melting the dielectric material holding the center pin into the connector and then we'll apply solder to the uh, to the center conductor and as it the body heats up it will uh, wick that solder down into the down into the connector tube if you got any uh, uh, solder onto the pin, any unwanted solder on the pin, then you could use your super wick to um, remove that 
excess solder or one unwanted solder by placing it between the unwanted solder and the soldering iron and swiping over it. Next we'll uh, solder the holes. Some folks have uh, promoted the idea that you don't need to um, solder the holes in this connector and I don't agree with that. Um, soldering the braid, braid in the connector uh, assures good electrical conductivity between the braid and the body and also helps uh, weatherize the connector, reduce the effects of weathering, and also improves the structural strength of the uh, connector assembly by trapping the, fil the uh, shield braid in the solder. You will subsequently pr uh, prevent the coax from twisting uh, in the connector and uh, that will eventually cause wires to break and a short to occur. So we'll straighten out a section of our solder, clean our soldering iron, and I'll place the soldering iron across the hole. And the objective here is to heat the body and not the coax underneath. So the uh, soldering iron tip is not projecting into the hole in this process. We'll hold it here for eight seconds or so, eight to ten seconds, and then I'll slide the soldering iron uh, back slightly and feed a sufficient quantity of solder into the hole to fill the hole, and then uh, swipe the soldering iron tip across the hole in order to make sure that it's completely filled in. You don't want to apply too little or too much solder during this process and specifically you don't want the solder to run along the outside of the connector body and get near one of the unsoldered holes because then you won't be able to solder that hole subsequently because the, so the new solder will just want to glom onto the solder already there on the body. We'll go to the opposite side. And this time, I'll apply the soldering iron tip across the hole. This is a quarter inch chisel point soldering tip, so it does not actually enter the hole and get into the coax. We'll hold that here for eight to 10 seconds. and back the soldering iron up a, a little bit and feed a sufficient quantity of solder into the hole to fill it. Give the soldering iron a little swipe to make sure that the hole is filled with solder. This is arguably the hardest part of soldering uh, this type of connector and requires some, uh, some practice in order to make good fills of the hole. And uh, don't get discouraged. Even uh, folks who have done this many times still uh, make mistakes and have to start over again.
this point it's a good time to continuity test the connector to make sure no shorts have been introduced. And then slide the connector body or uh, barrel onto the connector. And then the heat shrink tubing onto the connector body, uh, leaving a gap so that the connector barrel has room to move. And using a heat gun, and shrink the heat shrink tubing. And that is a solder type. PL259 on LMR400 Ultraflex using the cable prep tool.